Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is most frequently asked questions answered by Dlubal's support team. Uh, that's our regular webinar about questions that our customer asked in the last time or customers ask for features and we can now present such features that are wished in the past. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and PR, for example, for the German and English webinars. I will be the presenter today and I will yeah, present the first part of the webinar. The second part of the webinar will be presented by my colleague Stefan Hoffmann, who is the head of customer support. Yeah, and we will answer your questions when the other colleague uh, is presenting. How you can ask questions. I switch off my camera that you can see the full screen. You can press that button with the question mark, then enter your question here in that field, present, and we will receive your question. And yeah, we will answer you. Okay, then we start in the program RFM 6 and the first question is, how can I exclude objects from the design of individual combinations? Now, the steel design is already done, but in the second step, we would like to exclude these set of members, these two, this one and this one, from a design situation. I show you the free design situation uh, situations and yeah imagine we would like to exclude this set of members from the design situation free how to do that where well, is a button here uh, objects to exclude I can increase the table a little bit then I scroll down and we Enter here excluded member sets. I select the two member sets. Okay. So, and I copy that in the next field with the key F8. Uh, so, can you do that easily for <clears throat> more than one copies? That's quite easy. Okay. Now, yeah, we can now run the steel design. But to show this, show that in detail that that uh, the yeah, these combinations are not used for the design of the set of members, I show you another new feature. So I go to steel design and with a right click, you know, left in the table, uh, navigator data, the mouse is here. Uh, right click, settings. And then I can display results by design situation. This feature is yeah, available also for timber design, concrete design, and so on. So I press the button, OK. And then I run the steel design again. So and now we select design ratios by member set. Yeah, at the bottom. So, and now you can see design situation one, member set number one. I scroll down, member set number two. Then design situation number two, member set one and two. But design situation three is missing. Yeah, you can use it also for larger models or when you want to exclude some members or surfaces from the design I just use this nice feature okay then we turn to the next model and the next question the next question is how can i create a pre-deformed fe mesh like i used in rfimp rfimp was the add-on in rfm5 Yeah, and now it's also possible to create a pre-deformed FE mesh, uh, e.g. for um, eigen uh, value or, or, or mode shape. Yeah, and we would like to do that in this example. 
that's a member. It yeah, consists of surfaces. I created uh, a member HE, also with, with a cross section HEB 300 and yeah, created surfaces from this cross section. So, and we can show the, the results of the design loads, the deformation, well, the normal de deformation. Yeah, but we would like to create mode shapes. So how to do that? At first I activate left above, I go in the base data, then add-ons and I activate the structure stability. Press OK. So, and now I go to edit above here, edit active load case. I turn to the uh, dialog load case and combinations. And for this load case, I activate the calculate critical load. The program should yeah, calculate the eigenvalues. So I open the edit button. I press the edit button. Yeah, we would like to calculate the four lowest eigenvalues. Okay, I can press calculate. And now the stability analysis is running. First, this static calculation or static analysis and the stability analysis. And at the bottom in the table, I activate the stability analysis. And now you can see, sorry, the four eigenvalues. So, eigenvalue number one. Eigenvalue number two, three, four. Yeah, and we would like to use that mode shape for uh, imperfection, to create an imperfection from it. So we turn left at the bottom to change the navigator, navigator data. And you can see here the imperfections. And I create a new imperfection case by right click and press new imperfection case. So, and I select imperfection type buckling mode. I can uh, yeah, uh, choose between load case and load combination. Now we will do that for our load case number one. I turn to buckling mode and yeah, selected is load case number one. We have got only one load case. We can select the buckling mode here. Yeah, number one. So, and then we use for scaling direction spatial. So I enter uh, imperfection magnitude. Yeah, we don't do a GMNEA analysis here. We showed that in detail in a webinar. Just uh, yeah, go on our homepage, the webinars, and enter in the search buckling, and you will find the webinar when you would like to do a GMNEA analysis. Okay, assignment. Yeah, okay, that will be done later automatically. So now that is done, we have to go to uh, in the navigator data, I select the load case to turn in the yeah, uh, dialog, load cases, and combinations. And now I create two load combinations. The first one, 
left at the bottom, create new. I call it without imp. Without imp. So then I copy that one. So and rename it uh, with with imperfection and I select consider imperfection, our imperfection number one. And now we can compare the two uh, yeah, combinations. I go to assignment, I have to yeah, assign the load case number one. Okay, and now I can calculate all. So when the calculation is finished, we yeah, compare the two combinations. That is without imperfection. And now I turn to with imperfection. Yeah, and you can see the buckling mode is considered in this combination. Okay, that was all for this question. So that's the next model. And the next question is, can I automatically consider the stiffnesses of steel joints in the global RFM model? Yes, you can do that. I did it uh, previously. We, we showed that function also in the webinar last week, but there were several questions yeah, to showed it more in detail and yeah, compare the results. That's why I showed it on another example. You can see where are in the in the upper frame where are connections or steel joints created. Frame joint, yeah, this one, the first joint, uh, and a column based joint. Okay, and you can see there are already member hinges created, but how does the program create such member hinges? I double click on such a steel joint. Yeah, in the first step, you have to consider initial stiffness joint structure interaction. Yeah, we go to the edit button. Yeah, and this button must be selected, generate hinges in the global model. And then with a stiffness calculation, the program generates automatically the hinges in the global model. Where are another default setting Yeah, without that check, but we consider the initial stiffness or we, we would like to do the uh, joint structure interaction. Okay, also for the first joint, so I go back to the frame joint and under members, you need to select the stiffness analysis type, what you would like to consider, in that case, MY. So, and also for the first joint, M, Y on, on that place. So, and then we can select such a member hinge that was automatically created or better, just a moment. In, in the next step, you have to run the steel joint design it's already done in our um, in our example. So, and I select the stiffness analysis, and you can see for the frame joint and for the first joint, the rotational stiffnesses, and that stiffnesses will be transferred automatically then in the in the member hinge. So let's can compare that. So I. 
select the member hinge, I inc decrease it a little bit, the window. So, and then let's compare the values. So, and you can see the spring and yeah, this is this value. The rotational stiffness is, uh, yeah, the output is here, mega newton meter per watt and here kilonewton meter per watt. But it's, yeah, it's the same value. And this one is this one. And it was automatically transferred to RFM. So now let's compare the results. So in the lower frame, yeah, where's no rotational stiffness considered. And now we compare the results for, uh, no, I have to select left above static analysis, then the deformation, yeah, the, you can see the deformation with, uh, with considering the rotational stiffness or the member hinges is yeah, much higher. And when I select members and the internal forces, you can also see MY is increased in the middle here. I can show that also in a better overview in the PowerPoint slide. Now you can see where the, the deformation, uh, the uh, internal forces, MY, are higher in, in the middle of the horizontal beam, 2.6%, a little bit lower, 1.3% in the frame joint. But yeah, the deformation is much higher in the, in the middle when you consider yeah, the rotational stiffness of the steel joints. And yeah, you can see, it's yeah, necessary to consider such member hinges from, from steel joints and often yeah, does it uh, at the moment or now automatically. Okay, that should be the first part of the presentation. I hand over to Stefan. Stefan, it's your turn. Thank you, Andreas. I will continue with the next topic. The next question we want to take care of is uh, how can I adjust the stiffness of objects? So as known from AFM5, maybe you know that there are already various options to do that. And for AFM6, everything is more or less controlled mainly with the structure modifications you can assign. So let's have a look into it. Uh, you can modify the stiffness of various objects. So this part will mainly consider materials, members and surfaces. But as you can see in a structure modification, you can also modify the stiffness of materials and sections with a factor, for example. Uh, you can assign some for members and surfaces. I will come back later on that. You can also, if defined, modificate the stiffness of some other objects as you can see no the supports and so on you could even deactivate objects fully if you want for example consider that one beam is not existing just for testing purposes or to analyze how the structure will interact and you can as well also to take care and ignore non-linearities just to check what their outcome may be on the results or not. Uh, but uh, at first, we want to step in and check what we can assign for members and surfaces. So as you can see, once you activate members, there's a next tab where I did already define a member of modification for one of my two members in my example. And you can also edit this stuff. So I 
defined a bending stiffness of 0 0.5, so it's half of the bending stiffness into the main axis. Uh, you can also choose between different modification types. So as you can see, you could uh, assign a global factor for all stiffnesses. You can either choose for some other standard specified topic. So you can see what is then included in there if you need to choose them. Uh, but we want first have a look just with a simple example and see what will happen if we reduce the bending stiffness by two, so 0 0.5. And we can also assign it for surfaces. So as you can see, I have assigned it to structure modification one for one surface, and I adjusted the bending and torsional stiffness to 0 0.5, so half of the value. You can also choose between all other categories which are shown in here. So if you want to adjust the multiplication factors for some stiffness matrix element, you can see how our matrices are meant to be. You can assign a factor in here, but uh, we just want in our simple example show on how to use it and what the outcome may be. And the uh, second modification, uh, we want to consider a factor for materials. So the best thing would be in order to see the outcome in one file to define doubled materials. And I just simply set the E modulus to half of the existing one. Uh, so this factor will also divide it by two. So we should see some bigger deflection. I simply assign the structural dead load to my two members and surfaces. So the bottom part is without any modification and the top part is with modification. So let's run the analysis. And the outcome should be as may be expected. Once we have the results, we can see that with the same loading, half of the bending stiffness will give us most likely doubled of deflection. So this was considered with a, a member and a surface modification. We can also globally do that for materials. So the bottom objects have the normal material and the top objects have the modificated materials and the outcome is of course nearly the same so if we reduce the stiffness uh, the system and the objects will of course interact in a different way it's not only limited to choose the modifications in a load case if you are using the known design situations and the combination wizard the best and easiest way just to modify the stiffness for every combination is to assign the consider structure modification also to the combination wizard and then all your expected created combinations load combinations will include this modification so you can adjust your total model with this all right, so let's go to the next example. The second question I would like to present to you is how do or how can I analyze a pile? So it's a member type which was just introduced into our program some versions ago. Um, let's step first into the activated add-ons, what we choose. So for the soil, we have a nonlinear material behavior. Uh, we use the construction stages analysis for the soil to be settled as a initial state, so-called. And we, of course, need a geotechnical analysis in order to define the member type of the pile. We have a simple example in here. So we have one pile, five meter length, 90 centimeters diameter. And uh, we define our soil massive. Uh, first of all, we start in our example with the material. So it's a modified hardening soil material with defined values. Uh, then we define a borehole. So it's a simple structure just to show you how you can use the member type. Uh, so it's just one material, 10 meters depth. And we assign this borehole to our soil massive. So this will create with the size we enter our solid. So you can see the solid is created. And uh, then we start by adding the member. So it's a certain member type. You can see the pile. 
And if you choose for the pile, uh, you have to see that there is a new tab where you can assign a pile resistance type. So in our case, currently you can choose between trapezoidal or varying and you can enter your values of your pile, what you expect, how it will interact with the soil. Once we have done that, uh, I just want to step into our loads. So we have the dead load of, let's step into, into the load case, except the soil solids. Then we have the activate self weight for the soil solid and we have a one kilonewton load, which will be multiplied later on in our file. In order to have a good calculation, uh, it is very important that you can as well hit in the mesh settings, uh, independent mesh. So you will not have a fine mesh due to the members, uh, but the mesh will of course interact. Uh, you can also as well decide if you want to have a certain target length of your finite elements. And it's also mandatory to check what integrated objects are in the solid and how they are going to be used. So you can assign line protein, which is the line of our member pile, to be independent mesh integrated. If you have done that, uh, we have in our example now three construction stages. So there's an initial phase where we, we have a linear elastic uh, calculation guided by the just explained structure modification. So it's a linear analysis of our nonlinear material model. This is just to prevent from numerical problems. That's normally used in this case. The second construction stage is meant to have then the nonlinear soil acting. So it's like settling nonlinear. And last but not least, the next stuff is introducing the pile into the soil and adding a 300 kilonewton, 30 tons load. So we can run it. So if we run construction stage five, of course, it will start with the first stage where the soil is most likely uh, just assigning the dead load. And then it's uh, the nonlinear behavior of the soil in the next stage. And last but not least, the last construction stage with the load on the pile. Further analysis on the pile or information will be given as well, of course, in the next geotechnical webinar. So once we have results, we can evaluate them. And I think the best way is to use, for example, a clipping plane. So you can just use our planes, what we introduced. You can simply activate it. And then you can see, for example, the deformation. Uh, you can also slide it if you want to, uh, if, if it's necessary for you. And uh, you can, of course, as well display some results of the soil, so the solid stresses in order to evaluate them. <clears throat> or if it's necessary for you, you can also disable the clipping plane and simply check for the internal forces. For example, the normal force in the member, which is, of course, then given into the pile due to the interaction of the defined springs and the interaction so-called with the soil. All right, so let's step into the last topic as of today. How can I use the combinatorics for road bridges? So it was just introduced some versions ago. Uh, in order to activate this combination, you have to check in the standards one tab, the standard group. Uh, so we introduce the euro code zero road bridges with uh, two annexes and uh, i have already defined my loads on my two strips bridge so the left lane and the right lane uh, in this webinar the topic is not about defining the loads it's just about the combinations so we simply just quickly explain the loads it's the dead load then the mainly loaded line one mainly loaded line two, some pedestrian and cycle loads, some acceleration and braking loads. And then there is a tandem load model going over our bridge. This can also be created, of course, with our load wizard in RFM6. And then we have some temperature loads. In order to 
correctly combine the loads, uh, we have to assign certain action categories. So you can see, of course, that there is the normal load model categories and also some construction loads and so on, depending on what you would like to analyze. And uh, the main effort you can, of course, think of is that if you assign it, for example, to group 1A, don't miss that there will then be an additional tab where you can choose the type of the load. So our UDL loads will get assigned to the UDL. The pedestrian loads also added to group 1A will be assigned to pedestrian and cycle track. Our tandem loads will be assigned to uh, TS loads. And of course, accelerating and braking is also added in the group two with additional settings to braking and acceleration forces. The next thing is if you have multiple temperature loads, you can think that they will act simultaneously, alternatively or differently. In our case, it's uh, alternatively. And then you can step on and choose in the base, of course, that we want to use result combinations. And it will then, of course, create us our result combinations, which we can later on evaluate. All right, so once we of course have defined all our loads, we can simply run the analysis and check for our results. We will not evaluate every result combination, but just one. So it's simply meant to show you that, of course, the loads will then be taken into account and you can use the combinations for road bridges. Thank you, Stefan, for your presentation. No, uh, yeah, just an additional hint from my side. You can book our online courses, for example, the RFM6 masterclass course, uh, that's for beginners, or the Eurocode 2 course for the reinforced concrete design, Eurocode 3, steel design for more information you can press that links at the bottom or you can scan the qr codes the courses takes about you know, or between two and three hours you can stop the course anytime and continue when you have time again yeah just as i said click on that links for more information okay it should be also all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to Stefan for your presentation and for answering the questions when I presented. I wish all a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.